Hello, hello, welcome everyone to our live stream. This is Ned from Caspio. Please let me know if you can hear me okay. I just want to make sure the audio is working. And as always, we can commence and begin today's live stream with today's content. For those joining the live stream for the very first time, uh, thank you for, for joining us today. We have these live streams weekly every Monday at 10 a.m. California time, and we usually introduce some advanced topics to show you uh, the power of Caspio and how you can go beyond the standard features and how you can inject. A lot of times we'll cover standard features too, but in today's class, uh, specifically, we're gonna be learning about HTML and inline CSS and how we can inject that into our details page to make things look a little bit nicer and organize our layout so it's a little bit more cohesive. And it just looks better overall for the end user when they're looking at the data. Are you guys able to see my screen okay? Can you see me? Let me know if the picture is coming in. I know you guys can hear me loud and clear. That's a good sign. But if you are able to see me as well, along with what I'm showing on my screen, let me know. <clears throat> yeah, okay, perfect. So let's begin today's uh, live stream. Uh, we have a, a lot of exciting content. So how many people in today's live stream have dabbled with HTML and CSS inside the data pages? Have you tried to put in just some basic inline style or define your style? ahead of time and then use it in the, in the data page. Just curious to see if anyone's tried that before and if you were successful at arranging your fields as parameters in the data page using HTML blocks. Yeah, okay, good. Maybe you'll learn something else today. Hopefully you will. Um, and as always, everything that we create in today's class, I'll make it available as a download later on in the description of the YouTube video so that if you want to use that for your own projects, you can. But what we're gonna be doing today is taking the details page that looks like that. Um, you know, you may like the way the data is presented, it's just a single column, uh, but this is using standard features of Caspio. We could put the data underneath the labels and we can do multiple columns, but it would be much nicer if we can add some HTML and CSS to turn that details page into something that looks like that. So it's the same exact information that we just looked at, just a little bit more styling. Um, the main part of this details page is that we have three different containers to organize the data. I have one container for my image, one container for my data here on the right, and then a third container for my about me page or my about me text. And then we have the link up here to be able to edit the details. So let's see how we can turn that details, details page into something that looks like that. So inside my account, we're gonna open up the details page, the one that uses the standard features. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear everything. So I'm going to remove all the fields except for one, and I'll explain why in just a second. So let me come back here, and we're gonna exclude all the fields. And the only field I'm going to include is YouTube because you have to include one field in the details page. Unfortunately, there's no way around it. So you have to at least have one field in the details page. And then later on, we're going to hide that field because we're going to display that data inside the HTML block. So let me remove all of my sections. And we're going to just have a single HTML block, disable the HTML editor. So now when I hit preview, you're gonna see, you're gonna see that, okay? Empty. So as I said before, when you're looking at your data, you wanna think about how you want that data to be organized. And for me, it made the most sense to have three different containers, one, two, and three, because I felt like I can move all of my information and group all of my information in the second container that's next to my image, and then have this one at the very end. So we're gonna have three different div containers. Div is essentially used to organize our text or information, and then we can move that div around 
Uh, we can put some padding around it uh, if we need to. So we're going to have one div. And let's just close that div. Let's have a second one div. Close that div. And let's have the third one. Okay. So inside the first one, let me just do this so it's a little bit easier to see. So inside the first container, we're going to include the image. Okay, so I'm going to insert the image as a parameter. Up here, we have the avatar. And I'm going to use the file URL like that. Now, if you just do that, it's just going to display the image. I want to be able to style that image so I can make it round. Okay, as opposed to just having a square. So we're going to apply some style to it. So to display the image, we need to use an image source tag, image src equals, and then we put that image in between the quotes. And then we're simply going to say style equals, and then um, border radius 50%. Okay, something like that. So what that does, when you put 50%, that's always going to make your image and turn that image into a circle. Okay, if you do something like, let's say, border radius to be, I don't know, five pixel, then you're going to be able to see a round edge around that square. So it won't appear as a circle. Okay, so usually what the image is, it's up to you how you want to display that, but I'm just going to go with 50%. Okay, and then you just simply have to maybe even add a width if you want to. So let's just do width to be 200 pixels and then just close the image tag. And that's really... For now, all I'm going to do and just show you the preview so that you can see. Unless I made a mistake somewhere, give me a second. It does happen. Sometimes I miss a, let me just move something here really quickly. Oftentimes I'll miss a quote or something like that. So let me come back here. Style equals border radius 50% with image source. Unless it didn't. Oh, it did load. Okay, it just took a while. There it is. Yeah, I, I was wondering why it wasn't loading. It just took a it just took a moment for the image to load. Okay, so now you can see how we have the the round radius of fifty percent, and it put that square into a circle. Another thing that I want to do to my div here is I want to introduce a property called float. So we're gonna do style equals float, and we want to float this to the left. So if you think about the word float. Whatever content you put inside this div is basically going to float inside that container, which is our main details container. I want this image to flow up and to the left. Okay, so that's why we use the property float and value left to put this image in the upper left corner of my details page. Now in the second div, I want to be able to include all of my other information, which we have the name, we have the title, email, all of our social, all of our social media handles. So before I do any coding in here, I'm just going to insert all of my fields as parameters. So we're going to have the name. Whoops. Can I just do control Z? Yes, I can. Let's insert our title. Let's have our email and phone number. Let's have our phone. And what other information? I think I have the uh, city, state, and zip. So let's do city comma, state, and we'll just put a space here, and then we're going to add zip, and let's see, and then we have our social media handles, so let's include all of those as well, so we're going to use Twitter, let's have LinkedIn, and last but not least, we have the YouTube, all right. And even in the final div here, the final container, we're going to add our about section. So let's have about, which is going to be the final container. So if I hit preview now, let's just see what we have. Okay. So it looks a little messy, but we're going to fix that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is place this information in its own div and float that to the left. It's already inside its own div, but we're going to float that information left as well because I want that information to be right next to my top div because I want to float them side by side. So we're going to say style equals float left. And I think that's all I need to do for my second container. And then one thing that you want to do here 
If you want this to appear in its own row, you see how when I hit preview, the about section goes directly underneath my uh, other container. I want this to be in its own section. So what we have to do is we have to clear both of those divs that we put above that are floating to the left. So you're going to add div style equals clear both. So I want to clear both of these floats. Okay, so clear both and then close that and then just close the div. So essentially what that's going to do is going to put this in its own row underneath those two other containers above. So if everything worked out correctly. All right, so we have that in its own container, but then this for some reason is not floating here to my left. So let me see diff soft low left diff clear both div div div. Um, Okay, so let me see what I'm not doing correctly here. It should have put a next next to it, but maybe I'm missing something. Let me just see. I would like to put some padding to the left. So we'll do padding. Um, let's do padding left. And we'll just do 30 pixels for now because I want to be able to put uh, 30 pixels padding from this container to this container to separate them. So they're not exactly side by side. But even with that, let me just see. Yeah, I put the padding here, but for some reason it's not showing up over here to my right. And I think I know the reason why is because we have to arrange this content first. So let me come back here. We're going to add all of our styling now so that we can see later on when we finish everything if it's going to put it side by side next to it. I'm just thinking to see if I maybe forgot to add something here. I'm just looking at all of my inline CSS. OK, that's fine. Let's just do H1. H1 is already defined uh, in Caspio. OK, so this H1 style is already defined here. So whatever is inside the style, that's what the H1 is going to look like. I just want to see before I add my inline style. So I'm just going to preview that. And it puts that name. You can see how it's a little bit bigger. The font, um, the text is slightly bigger. I'm just going to put font weight to make it bold. So it appears a little bit thicker. So we're going to come back here and we're going to say with some inline style, we can go style equals font weight. And we're going to add 600. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Preview. And now you can see how that text is a little bit stronger, okay, a little thicker, because I want that to pop. All right, so underneath that, we have our title now. And for title, let's just do H3 and see what that looks like first. And if you like the H3 that's provided by Caspio, you can, you can maintain that same exact heading, okay? So if I hit preview, I think it's going to be blue, and I don't want that to be blue. I want that to be um, maybe a lighter gray color. For example, so we're going to add a color of my text to be gray. So let's come back here and just say style equals color of the text can be gray. Now we can do gray like maybe let's just do let's see what um, DDD color is going to look like. Let's do that. Let's do the font size to maybe be about 17 pixels and see what that looks like. And I also want to be able to add a margin on the top, because if you look at the preview, there's too much separation from my taste here. I want to bring the title a little bit closer to my name. So I'm just going to do margin top, which controls the top margin of that container or of that heading. And we're going to just say minus 10 pixels. So minus 10 will bring it up, essentially. If you put plus 10, it's going to create even more spacing between your name and your title. So. Let's just add the closing quotation here and just see what that looks like. OK, so it's a little too light of a gray. So we're going to make it slightly darker. And you can see how it closed the gap between the name and the title. OK, so let's bring this back. And let's just say, instead of color DDD, let's just do 666 and see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm OK with that. OK, because you can still see it. It's visible. I think that works for me. All right, what else did I do? So now we have the uh, city, state, and zip, which essentially it's the same exact thing which, what we just did. We can just copy and paste. So if I come back here and grab my H3 style, copy that. Um, 
Actually, phone and email goes underneath the city state and zip. So let me just do this really quick. I'll copy this route, delete it, and put it underneath the title. And then we'll just copy the H3. Paste that in front. And we close the H3. Now, you can see I'm doing an inline CSS directly here in my my code. You can predefine this ahead of time. If you wanted to add your own style here at the very top, you could. And then you can just define your H3, H1 headings uh, directly in the style, or you can go to the style here. Uh, it's already available, all of these headings, and you can just add this inline style that you have here to the, to the style, and then just use H3 without using the inline CSS like I did. But you know, when I'm dealing with less information, like I am in this details page, I don't mind just copying and pasting. I know it's a bit redundant, but it works for me. That's what I'm used to. You obviously don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. So let's just see. Okay, so there's my city, state, and zip. So it's starting to look like this one here. Okay. Now my edit link, why don't we go ahead and take care of that next? Why don't we put that edit link and we're going to float that edit link to the right, right next to the name. So we come back here and where is my name? Here it is. So that's my name. We're going to add a very simple href link here. So href equals, we're going to use the hashtag because I don't have the URL just yet. We're going to close that and we're going to say edit and we're going to close the a tag. So let's just see what that looks like. It should be right next to my name. Okay, so it's a little edit link. You can keep it that size if you want to, but I'm a big fan of, you know, applying a little bit of style to my href link to make it look like a button. So I would just come back here and just add some styling and I would say, okay, so let's have a border, one pixel, solid, and why don't we do the same color, which was 666. So that puts a border around our link. Okay, so it's going to create like a little square. But I don't want it to be a square, so we're going to do a border radius of maybe three pixels. Let's add some padding of maybe four pixels on the top and bottom and 10 pixels left and right. And for my text size, why don't we do font size to be a little bit bigger? We can play around with that. Um, let's do 14 pixels and see what that looks like. So let me hit preview now. All right, so there's my button. Uh, I would also change the color of my text. You can leave it blue if you want to, but I'm just going to float that up into the right and just see what it looks like directly inside here. So we're going to say float. Right. And let me just take my preview, see what it looks like. All right, once I move this up here in the container, we'll figure out how to do that. But once I move this information, you'll see that it's going to position that up into the right within this container here. We'll come back to that, okay? Next up we have, oh, you know what? I put this closing H3. No, I did put it in the right place. Let me just make sure it's in the same row. Okay, that's right. All right, so for, for, uh, for email and phone, I do want to add, let me just take a look. So it's the same H3 style. And then we have the quick label here in the front. So we're going to just copy once again, very simple. We're going to copy this H3 and just paste that twice. And we're going to close that H3 like this. Okay. Let me just preview, see what it looks like. All right, now I don't need, I can actually create a little bit of spacing here underneath my, my address. I don't mind doing that. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm going to create some space. And very easy, you can just remove the top margin from the email. Like that, hit preview. And now you're going to be able to see a little bit of gap between the address and the email. Let me add my label right over here in the front. And for the label, we can say, Let's just do a span style equals font size can be 12 pixels, a little bit smaller. And then we'll do font weight to be bold. 
and let's see anything else i don't think so and then we're just going to add our text here to say email and we're going to close the that's a period we're going to close that span tag oops wrong closing all right so all i did in front of my email is i added my label called email i want the size to be 12 pixels i want the font weight to be bold and i want the text now to be a little bit darker so it stands out so let's do color of the text to be maybe 333 three, three. i don't know what that's going to look like let's find out all right so there's my email all right why don't we add a little bit of space there in between the email and the actual label so we're going to just say mbsp and that should create the space between the email and the label and the actual email itself. So I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the phone number. So let's come back here and add the same spin. Copy that and add that right in front of the phone number, but my label is not called email. It's called phone. So we're gonna add the MBSP and then we're just gonna close our span tag here like this. All right, let's hit preview. Okay, um, I made a mistake here. Let me just see what I did wrong because now it put my phone into so, so I, I know it's a simple mistake here. Let me just find it. Uh, style, span style, on 12 pixels, font, color, font. Okay, so I need to actually put my closing span tag right after my phone. So I put it in the wrong place. All right, let's hit preview now. All right, so it's coming together. We have our labels, we have our data here, we have this information up above. Now it's time to put in the uh, styling for all of our social media handles. So we'll come back here. And what we need to do is introduce an href link. Hopefully everybody's familiar with that. This is actually the link in my table. So this is what gets inserted for the link. So when people click on the actual text, so Twitter, they are taken to that URL, which exists directly as a data value in my table. But we need to style it, right? So what we're going to do here, href style equals, and we're going to add a background color. So again, I like to create these buttons. So for the background color, what I usually do is I go to twitter.com and I will use my color picker. You can download this extension if you'd like. Uh, for Chrome, if you'd like to just be able to select any color. So what I did was I just clicked on the uh, Twitter logo up here and grabbed that color. So let me just copy that, come back to my account. And then for background color, we're going to do something like this. Let me just add my hashtag. Semicolon. So that's the background color for my button. Let's add some padding. And for padding, maybe we can say five pixels top and bottom. Maybe a little bit more. Um, let's try maybe eight pixels top and bottom and 15 pixels left and right. Let's also do a border radius for fun. That's gonna be three pixels. So it creates a nice round edge around the button. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything. Uh, we definitely want the color of our text to be white, FFF, because the background color is gonna be that uh, logo of Twitter. So we want to have a nice contrast between the text inside the button and the background color. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, I can't think of anything else, but let me see what it looks like. We'll come back to it if we want to add something else to it. No, that looks pretty good to me. That looks good. Now let's create the final two and it's as simple as just copying and pasting, right? So we can just, well, let me first create my hyperlink like this. So actually it is just as simple as copy and paste. So we're going to remove these two, LinkedIn and YouTube. We're going to copy this two more times. So let's just paste and paste and remove the Twitter field with our LinkedIn parameter, and then we're gonna remove this final one with YouTube. So it calls out the URLs for both of those social media accounts. So we have YouTube. 
and we just have to change the background color. Okay, so for LinkedIn, this is what I like to do. I don't have that LinkedIn color available, so I would just grab my color picker and just look inside the logo and grab that color, copy it, come back here and paste for LinkedIn. And then we have YouTube icon. Let's just go to images. And I can just grab that color here quickly. Close that, come back here. And for YouTube, we're gonna do that. And I just need to rename my labels. So this will become a linked in, and this will become YouTube. Let's just keep everything uniform and hit preview. Hopefully everything looks good. Yep, I like it so far. It looks good to me. Um, we could add a little bit of padding to create some space between the phone number field and the Twitter field or, or the social media accounts. So we can do that on the phone number um, line. So let's come back here and find that phone number line. So we have margin top. Why don't we also add margin bottom? And let's add maybe 15 pixels on the bottom of our phone number field. So let's hit preview. And there's that spacing now between that. All right, next, let's go ahead and modify the final one here, which is the about section. Okay, so my about section, you can see I made the text a little bit bigger. We have a background color, border radius. It looks okay. So let's come back here and edit that as well. So we have some text for about. Uh, inside the div, we're going to say style equals background color. And we'll do a gray background color. I forgot what gray color I was using here. So let me just pick it. F8. Okay, let me copy that. So F8, F8. We'll do some padding around our text. Maybe we can do 20 pixels. Font size can be... Um, why don't we do font size to be... Well, we can match everything else that we have. Maybe like 15 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. I also want the width to be 500 pixels of the div container because right now when you preview, I mean, it's all together inside one container because um, everything is still inside a single column here. But I'm going to add 500 pixels here to change the width of the about section. For this, we can just say, uh, let's do bold to make that label appear bigger and then we'll just add a simple line break to put the about section underneath the label. Let me just see what it looks like. Oh, well that disappeared. I made a mistake somewhere. Div style equals background color, padding 20 pixels. Font. Oh, I forgot to add my closing quotes here. So small little mistakes. Okay. And you can now see that we have we were able to position this information up above next to our uh, image. I'm going to add some padding so it's not so close to the section above. So I'm going to introduce some padding up above here above the about, uh, about section. So let's just say here we'll say margin top. Oops, that's okay. I'll add a margin top. And we'll just say maybe 20 pixels. Close that, hit preview. And now we have some spacing up above. And finally, what we want to do is simply just hide this YouTube field. And that's easy to do in cast field. There's my YouTube field. I just need to add another HTML block, move that down. I'm going to disable my toolbar and just say div style equals display none. All right. And then we'll just add another div. You have to add two divs here like that. And then we're going to add another HTML block, move it underneath the YouTube field and just close both of those two divs. So just div, div, and let me hit preview now. Okay, so we no longer see that YouTube field. All right, how's everyone doing so far? <laughs> I know it is a lot of information. I am just trying to show you that if you master the ability of just knowing just some basic HTML and CSS rules, you can take your application to the next level 
to make it look nice and presentable for your end user, the way the information is laid out um, without you having to deal with just the standard features in Caspio. Obviously, you can build it quicker if you use standard features, but um, you're limited to the way the information is going to be displayed, right? Because there is only so much flexibility we have with arranging those fields and data values on the details page. But if you utilize the HTML block the way I just did, and you insert your fields as parameters throughout the HTML block, you can really, well, you can really customize and make things look a little bit more cohesive the way the information flows top to bottom on that details page. Now, as always, I'm going to make this information available for you. Okay, so I will make all of this information available for you to download directly underneath the description of the YouTube video later on. Just give me a couple of hours to make that accessible. And then if you guys would like to copy what I have here, you can. Absolutely. Um, I will just show you that you can really even go further by, you know, having a hover over color. So if you hover over the link, you can have this have a different color when you hover over. So if you, let's say, were to define your own style up above, uh, let's just say style, and just say you add a hover, and you put a background color of, let's say, maybe, oh, I don't know, how about 999, okay? So when you hover over the A link, and we have a few A links here, when you hover over that A link, the background color should turn into like this darker or lighter gray. So let me see, hopefully uh, it does. And you can see that it did. So it's a nice little effect. Obviously that dark gray is too much because now I can't see my label unless when you hover over, you change the color of the text to be white. So it has that effect of a nice contrast against the gray. You can also do things like uh, text decoration. If you don't want this underline to show up underneath your link the way it does here, uh, you could do stuff like that as well. So if I edit my profile and we go to the details page, where is my hyperlink? So you could do things like this. So if I say text decoration none, okay. As, a, as the text implies, decoration, don't apply any kind of decoration to my text, which is that hover over underline link. So if I do that for YouTube and we do a preview, you see how we no longer have that underline? These two still have it, but you can apply that same property of text decoration none, and then it's going to have the same thing. Okay. All right, I think we have officially covered off all of today's low code uh, tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content. Let me know if you have any questions in the chat window. Uh, next Monday, we're building an application together from scratch. We're going to build an applicant tracking system. Okay, how you can put a job listing data page on the public side, so any applicants can apply for open positions. And then in the back end, we can log in as maybe HR or an admin level user. So when we log in, uh, we are able to see the applicants, their cover letter, their resume. And just keep in mind, we don't have that much time. It's impossible for me to build the entire system in one hour. So it's going to be a simplified version of an applicant tracking system. Uh, our own internal applicant tracking system that Caspio uses is actually built on the Caspio platform. And we have the whole workflow where an applicant comes in for an interview. We have the phone interview form. We have the on-site interview form. And then it's a whole 360 system where as a manager, I can assign this applicant to somebody in a different department to conduct that interview. Okay. So just letting you know, you can build a robust, sophisticated applicant tracking system, but because we're limited in time, I can only build a simplified version of it. Okay, but I will point out a couple of places in the system where you can expand upon it, maybe using some triggers and tasks to notify the applicant automatically, maybe 
the day before their interview or either the phone interview or an on-site interview. And believe me, we do use these triggers in our own internal system to notify applicants and remind them of the upcoming interview. Okay, so how does everyone feel about today's content? Do you feel like this is something you could quickly, I'm not quickly, you know, that's subjective, that you could pick up and possibly apply to your own applications? It just takes a little bit of practice. I promise it's not that difficult. If you use the H3, uh, W3, sorry, W3 schools, this is where I learned all of these techniques with HTML and CSS. And tutorials up here, you go through each of the chapters, learn HTML, learn CSS. It is rewarding, so I, I definitely recommend that you go through that. If I can do it, I promise you, you can do it as well. And then if you want to learn even more, there's JS, you know, there's a lot of cool things with SQL if you'd like to learn that as well. All of these industry standard languages you can inject into your Caspia data pages to make your applications more dynamic. You feel dizzy? Okay, <laughs> that was uh, not the intent. So hopefully, um, but a little bit of practice, Didier, uh, you won't feel as dizzy and you'll see that everything really comes together. It's fun, you know, when you're actually putting it together, it's fun to see how your data changes based on the style that you apply inside the HTML block. So let me just come back here, go back to my details page. Yes, it does look a little bit dizzy. You see how I did an inline style here for my image to make the border radius 50%, which turns the image into a circle. If I wanted all of my images, if I had multiple images, and if I wanted all of my images to have the same exact style of 50%, I can predefine that here in my style by saying image, and I can do a border radius of 50%. And now I don't have to include this style here as an inline style. I could remove that. And if I'm using an image source tag anywhere in my code, any image that is displayed is going to have the border radius of 50% because I defined that up here. Okay. All right. Border radius 50% image, image source tag with 200 pixel. Everything just broke all of a sudden. Even though it's not supposed to do that. Why? With 200 pixels. Oh, I know why because I removed the style here. I removed the style for my width. Okay, so I should not, I, I wasn't supposed to remove this because I still have my width, right? So that's why. Uh, width. I removed the border radius, but I need to still keep the style for my width. So I removed that here and I hopefully now it should be 50. Okay, so now it's a square, but at least it's 200 pixels. So why is that not being applied? Image source. Uh, well, that's interesting. Very interesting. Um, I don't see a mistake here. Oh, because I'm using a colon, not a semicolon. You see, I can get a little dizzy myself when you have to go through each one of these. Um, that you add inside the code. I mean, the semicolon, colon, just a slight mistake like that can throw everything off. Hopefully now it's gonna be, yeah, there's the circle now. But you can see just a little tiny mistake like that throws everything off and then you have to debug it and troubleshoot and find where you made the mistake. So it can get a little dizzy, but I promise it is not as difficult as it seems. You use the divs as the main containers in grouping your data, in grouping your fields. Okay, so you just have to decide when you're building this, okay, how do I want to lay out my data in the details page? Do I want to have multiple containers? And if that's the case, you're going to use that many divs. Okay, so div is just a container in an HTML document where you can organize and lay out um, how you want to lay out your data. Just think of it like a container, okay? 
And inside that div is where you're going to apply your style to your fields and your data, either using inline CSS with properties and values or predefined style with all the properties and values, and then just apply them back to your, to your data. Okay, but I promise, as I said, I will make this available as a download inside the description of the YouTube video, and then just download it, use it. Uh, you can play around with it, and you can learn from it. And hopefully, if you look at it in enough times, you won't feel as dizzy anymore. <laughs> I hear coffee helps. All right, let me know if you have any questions. We are officially done with the content. So it was a 40 minute class today. Next week will be mostly standard features on how to build that applicant tracking system. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the live stream now. I'll keep the chat running for a few more minutes. Um, and let me know if you have any last second questions before we take off today. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, you're welcome, I appreciate it. Thanks for the feedback. I really enjoyed seeing you guys come back, and uh, we're definitely going to try to make some, bring in some more humor to these live streams uh, with some polls, and you guys can vote on things. Um, hey, King Capo, good to see you. So, King Capo, are you benefiting from these live streams? Let me know if you're finding this uh, information useful and if you're able to apply it to your Caspio applications. I mean, the question goes for everyone in today's live stream. I just want to make sure people are uh, leveraging this information and this content that I'm providing uh, for their own apps. If not, that's okay. Maybe you don't have a need for it, but if you are, even better. All right, so I'll await your text. Absolutely, these classes have been immensely beneficial. Thank you. Good, good. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. And believe it or not, when I do these live streams, I have to put the content together ahead of time. So even I learn a few things. A couple of times I had to go back to our team and uh, refresh my memory on how to do something. So it is beneficial to me as well. All right. So as I said, we'll end the live stream. We'll keep the chat running for a few more minutes and then we'll go about our day. Have a good Monday. Have a good rest of your week. And hoping to see you next week as well on how to build the applicant tracking systems. All right. Have a good day.